the morning market kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Friday morning, one hour to go until the opening bell, and we got markets starting off to the negative side right now. Dow futures, negative 101 points, trading at 29,227. S&P, negative by nine, trading at 33.36. And the NASDAQ, negative by 31 points, trading at 94.94. As, we're spe as we speak, we're waiting for the jobs number to come in this morning. Jobs in December forecast to add non-farm payroll 165,000. We'll see as that number is expected when that drops. Jumping over, it looks like we got 225. Got to love the Tigers, Den. They're already talking about it. And as the headline pops up, I'll bring it over here. Let's just jump to the front page of CNBC because that's where we got the number. 225 versus 158 expected. U.S. added. For January number, always interesting when it starts right at 8.30 a.m. as I come on the air. So let's start things off and jump over to the charts and see how the markets are reacting. Dow 30 right now, 29,290. You see the lows that we made at about 6 a.m. of 29,160. The numbers climbing higher. These are 15-minute bars climbing higher on that jobs number. That's quite a beat, 225. NASDAQ 100 trading at 94.44. We dip below 9,400 briefly at 6 a.m. at the lows. We're now 43 points above that level, peaking a bit higher on that jobs number, but pretty muted action so far on quite a beat. S&P 500, 33.41. You back things up to overnight, even after the close last night, making the highs of 33.49, all the way down to a low of 33.27. There's your crude oil market, trading lower as well, approaching the $50 price mark. Crude not getting a big reaction at all to that jobs number. Gold spiked lower initially on the 225,000 jobs added in January, now trading at 15.69. And the euro US dollar under 110 at 109.65. In terms of what else you have happening across the market, earnings last night, Uber shares spiked spiking higher as the company says it's going to reach a key profitability goal sooner than expected as to when shares spiked after hours after the company moved its EBITDA profitability forecast to just the fourth quarter of this year. The company shares up as much as 10 percent. They lost 64 cents versus 68 expected revenue 4.07 versus 4.06 revenue growth accelerated on an annualized basis to 37 percent. That's pretty remarkable, coming up from 30% one quarter ago. In respect to guidance, they're forecasting a $1.35 billion loss. The estimate is less than the $2.83 billion the market was looking for. And rides, including ride-sharing services and fees from drivers, $13.51 billion in gross bookings, up 18%. Uber and Lyft both trading higher on that news as we pull up their charts. Whoop. U-B-E-R, did spike as high as 41.03, closed last night at 37.09, looking to open at around 39.13, about $2 higher, going over to Lyft as well, catching a bid on the Uber news to go along with, closed yesterday at 47.42, looking to open at about 49.20. In terms of what else you have happening around the market, jumping over to other news items I had up here. We also have Pinterest earnings out last night after the bell. Pinterest trading higher. Pinterest reporting fourth quarter results after the market closed Thursday. Beat on both the top and bottom lines. Shares climbing as much as 17%. Here are the numbers, 12 cents a share versus 8 cents forecast. Revenue of 400 million right on the dot versus 375, excuse me, 371. Monthly active users, 335 million versus 331 and average revenue per a user. Not a bad boost when you boosted eight pennies. That's what, a, a solid almost 7% rise per a user from 114. Full year outlook also exceeded analyst expectations. They expect revenue to come in at 1.52 billion. Quite a number for Pinterest and to pull up their numbers so far this morning. How about that? 
20% to see the action, how it goes, P-I-N-S. Quite a spike higher, closed yesterday at 2301, looking to open at about 2735, the high there, 2780. In terms of the coronavirus, a quick update from China, those numbers now at 31,000 as of Friday morning, total deaths 636. You have Uber commentary. This is just a live feed going on, but nonetheless, remarkable numbers as that coronavirus continues to affect economies. In the world of cannabis, Aurora Cannabis taking a $1 billion charge, cutting 500 jobs as CEO exits. So CEO Terry Booth will retire and Ch executive chairman Michael Singer be gonna become the interim CEO. The beleaguered marijuana producer also announced a $752 million excuse me, million in impairment charges, cutting 500 jobs, about 25% of corporate positions. So that CEO will retire as the beleaguered marijuana producer announced. So it's a billion Canadian in impairment charges, 752 million US and cutting 500 jobs, ACB to pull up their chart. This has been a tough one, folks. I believe in the cannabis industry, but when I was talking about a few stocks, this is one that I actually thought of staying away from anytime you get this low to check out the yearly. I mean, in the face of a tough year, that is an especially tough chart and backing it up as far as it goes. You see the euphoric run up to 1253, but as other stocks in this industry have found a footing to go back to the last year, have found a footing, ACB continuing to struggle to find one. And when you get into the 50 minute, we touch 159, 166, you back things up. That is basically right around that low of 150 that we made on January 14th. For some context there, Canopy Growth, they've had a tough year as well, but from 52 to 21, the low being 1381 and Kronos as well, similar tough year, 24 to 6, but not exactly 10 to a dollar as uh, Aurora has done. Checking back in on the markets on that jobs data, seeing if we've gotten movement, and that's why you check back in. Quite a little reversal initial, quite a beat. The jobs number 225,000 versus 165 expected. You have the market initially spike higher. You now have the Dow at 29,206, made it as low as 29,192. NASDAQ 100 spiking to a low of 9,405, currently at 9,415. We were as high as 9,450, just fast movement. S&P's 3,333 after making it to 3,343 initially on that news. Crude oil hanging top at $50.36. Gold, you're actually seeing higher. Pretty remarkable. You get quite a beat, 225 versus 165. And guess what? Markets are lower. Gold is higher. Euro US dollar sitting right under 110 at 109.64. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be coming back after the break. We'll go over the other news we have out there in terms of what is happening in the markets. Treasury bonds, what they're doing right now as we look to Friday trading. Markets trading lower. After what happened last Friday, quite a slide. We'll see who wants to go long into the weekend this weekend. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. The Dow jumping around right now. We got Dow futures negative 38 points at 29,290. S&P futures negative by three at 33.41. Nasdaq futures negative by 14 at 94.41. Taking a look at where we are in the indices. Coming off that jobs number, the Dow right now 29,215, making it as high as almost 29,301. Nasdaq 100 trading at 94.13 was as high as 94.50. 94.50 and the s and is making it up to 33.43 and quite a spike initially right now to 33.32 jumping over to the numbers in terms of jobs added 225,000 expectation was 165 somewhere they're listing it as 158 with a boost from warm weather you see the headline flashing as well getting into the exacts of it an unseasonally mild January helped power the U.S. job market to more gains with non-farm payrolls rising 225,000. The unemployment rate ticking higher to 3.6 percent, but for the right reason, as labor force particip participation rate increasing 0.2 percentage points to 63.4 percent, matching its highest level since June of 2013. Good to see that. Anytime you're seeing a low unemployment, you want to see participation rate high and you want to see wage increases to go along with this unemployment rate economists surveyed by dow jones were looking for payroll growth of 158 and a jobless rate to stay at 3.5 its lowest in more than 50 years a more encompassing labor market indicator that includes discouraged workers and those holding part-time positions for economic reasons also moving higher 0.2 percentage points to 6.9 percent the so-called real unemployment rate previously had been at its lowest level in the history of the data series. However, employment to population ratio ratio in the household survey rose to 61.2%, highest since November of 2008, and 0.5 percentage points higher than a year ago. So the weather said sensitive construction industry, 44,000 jobs, well above the average of 12 last year. Manufacturing has had a months long slump, 12,000 positions, leisure and hospitality adding 36,000, as did healthcare, professional and business services 21,000, bringing to 390 the number of jobs added this sector has had, and transportation warehouse. So 
rising workers all, all across the board. More good news, average hourly earnings. Here we go, 3.1% over a year ago to $28.44. That's quite an average hourly number. Ahead of the estimates for 3% growth, so 3.1, 18 consecutive months of wage gains above 3%. As the initially reported 2.9 for December was revised to three, average work week unchanged 34.3 hours. Lots of good numbers in here. Pretty remarkable that you see the market trade higher and then actually pull back a, lit, a bit, jumping back. I mean, that's quite a bar we got across the board. S&P is hanging at 33.32, backing things up to where we were last night. And there is your closing bar. There is your gap right here. So you can see that we've actually traded right back to where we are barely in the negative for the S&Ps, but you can see that we made it as high as 3357, and we are now 25 S&P points off of that high. Pretty remarkable. What else you have happening out there? Treasury yields slide ahead of that jobs number. So this article up here ahead of time, we can check in and see how they're doing. But as of 4 a.m. Eastern time, the yield on the benchmark 10-year Treasury note, which moves inversely to price, 1.61%. The 30-year was trading at 2.08%. To pull up a chart of those, the 10-year, let me slide this over. So there's your 10-year, and you can see the point in time, 4 in the morning, trading higher, higher price all throughout. That is yesterday's action, and that's the 10-year at about 130.24. Other news out there, Credit Suisse chairman says loss of trust led to... Times, times, exit. So in a battle on the board, the chairman has ousted the CEO officer, the chief executive officer, Tidge Jane Thyme, to stem a decline in its reputation in the wake of a scandal that unnerved the Swiss establishment. So Credit Suisse Group AG, they are ousting their CEO this morning as that battle. And this story making a lot of waves around the press, around the whole world, as it should Death of a hero doctor back to the coronavirus sparks crisis of confidence in Xi's China. So this having to do with, unfortunately, the doctor who waved one of the first red flags who was admonished by the Communist Party on the beginning of this has passed away, 34-year-old doctor on Friday. So a wave of fury in China. Lee Weinling, who was sanctioned by local authorities after blowing the whistle on the disease last month, succumbed to the virus early on Friday. His death was immediately met with an outpouring of grief, as you should. You know, that's quite, um, it's good to see the people rallying around him. And outraged by hundreds of millions of social media users, they vented about how he was initially silenced and mourned with the pregnant wife and young child he left behind. Very sad. Um, but China facing some heat, bringing it back into the political sides of things. China facing some heat in terms of how they handle that from their own people, and we'll see if that plays out at all. Boeing, back in the press, but not exactly for the right reasons. Fixing their new software bug on the Macs. So Boeing's discovered a new software problem on the grounded 737 Max, but the company said the flaw won't set back the goal of returning the plane to service in mid-2020. Now, I'm a believer that, you know, morality aside in terms of what they did, that that is probably going to find a bit at some point. It's a duopoly of airplane makers in this world. You have Boeing and you have Airbus. Boeing, the American company, America needs a company that can make airplanes. Airplanes, they will rebound. Uh, but they are consistently over-promising and under-delivering. So I would not be surprised to see this be a setback, potentially, as they continually talk about one date and it gets pushed back continually over and over. And to check into Boeing this morning, <clears throat> because it's pretty remarkable. You know, they've got a lot of funding and so forth, but in the face of some tough headlines, even over the last few days, Boeing shaking it off as they have, I believe it's 13 billion, they got additional loans, and to put this on a yearly, quite a slide. We've been down at this 320 level on multiple occasions. We almost made it back there in May. We did touch that level in August. We almost came down at that level again in October. Yet again in December, went through that level on the toughest of news on January 22nd. And from there, you're up almost $40, which is a good 13% off the lows already. And you can see that we're charging back in positive territory in the face of tough headlines. When that plane does come back online, you can expect that that may be appreciate. Checking back on the markets, just seeing where we are constantly. We're now approaching those lows. 
29,192. The market, I'm not sure if it's saying that maybe the news is too good and they won't get the cuts that they were thinking about. Maybe that's potentially getting priced in because 225,000 versus 165. Dow 30 approaching the lows of the session as you have all the markets in the red. Crude oil approaching $50 and gold spiking higher on that jobs number 1573. What else, folks? In six days, Basil Chapman, check out the front page of TFNN.com. You'll see Basil on there. The dark cloud, cover, dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Basil always puts out a great update over the weekends, so don't miss that. You can sign up, 30-day money-back guarantee, 90-minute webinar that you can gain access to on next Thursday that will be archived. Stay tuned. We'll wrap up the program when we come back, see what we got for earnings next week. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one mark timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Checking back in on the markets right now. Dow futures off 131 at 29,197. S&P negative by 14, 33.30. NASDAQ futures negative by 52 as the market's trading to lower price on a big jobs number B, 225,000 versus 165. Checking ahead to next week in terms of earnings that we have on tap. On Monday, you get Allergen, AGN. They'll be coming out with their numbers ahead of today's open. You have Allergen trading at 195.50. You also get on Tuesday some of the names that stuck out Dish Network, 
quite a trade yesterday for Dish from 38.47 to 36.83, putting them on a little bit of a longer time frame. You see the volatility trading higher though since about August. You also get Lowe's, the movie theater, L, some volatility there as well. But again, coming from August from about 47 to 53, Lowe's this morning trading about flat at 53.31. You also get on Tuesday Lyft on the heels of Uber earnings. We covered, took a look at Lyft this morning, trading higher on Uber, talking about profitability ahead of where the market may have anticipated. And on Wednesday, we get Applied Materials. And these chip stocks, quite the run that we've had, backing things up the year, check that out. Back even from 36.80 up to $63 and change. You put this on a three-year weekly and you see the run. It did have lower to begin that run though. What else we have going on? Checking out on some of the FANG stocks. Google, that's a weekly. We all know how they've done on a weekly. Google, about flat this morning. Microsoft, 182.90, down a bit. Netflix, looking to open 365.10. And what are we missing? Amazon. I knew there was one. 2042, Amazon, quite a run that they've had. Recently, going into even the hourly, you saw the spike on the earnings up to 2133, looking to open at about 2042. Stay tuned, folks. Thanks for joining me. We got our man Larry Pezzamento coming up live at 9 o'clock with Trade What You See. I'll be back at 10 o'clock with Tom, live programming all Friday. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs>